Okay, I have this example for number bases. So let's just walk through this program and see what it does. Um, so I just have a, a, a variable i, um, and I want to initialize that to the value of 8. And then we're going to output it in different formats. So if we look at the first output statement, um, I'm just outputting uh, to the screen. Uh, I've got set width. This is just to kind of keep uh, the spacing uh, between it. And then we convert it to decimal, which we won't really need to do the first time. It's already in decimal format. Um, and output I. And the next line, we're going to convert it to octal format. Um, same variable output, but now we've got a different format. So uh, it'll show up that way. And then finally, hex. Uh, so let's execute that and, and see what it does. And you'll see uh, we've got eight decimal, uh, one zero in octal, because uh, we only have eight digits in octal, zero through seven. So when we get to eight, we have to start over. So it's, it's one in the second column and back to zero in the first. And, and of course, hex is the same uh, representation as decimal, so it's at eight. Um, one of the things you'll notice with all this, uh, we're, we're using the standard uh, namespace quite a bit. So uh, one of the first things I want to do just to kind of simplify this um, is go ahead and, and get rid of some of those. And um, since we're only using the one namespace, we'll go ahead and put up here at the top uh, using namespace standard. Um, but I wanted to start out with all those there just so you could see we are using all of these uh, manipulators from uh, that namespace. Uh, let's go ahead and test it, uh, compile it, run it. It should do exactly the same thing, uh, and it does. Okay, so that's just the first example. Um, next thing we could do, uh, we could initialize it to zero, but that's pretty boring. Uh, it's going to be pretty much eight. Um, so since uh, C14, we can also use uh, binary uh, literals. Uh, and we start those with a 0, B, uh, and then the binary number. So let's initialize I uh, to binary 1, 0, 0, 0. Now what is that? Remember the place is the 1's place, 2's, 4's, and 8's. So we expect that to be what? The, the decimal number uh, 8. Uh, and we can test that with this program. So let's compile and run that. And lo and behold, it is decimal 8. Uh, again, uh, octal, uh, one zero, and, and of course hex is, is still uh, represented by the, the, the eight digit, okay? Um, so uh, one more example here, let's change it up. So eight and then uh, plus two there, just to make it a little bit more uh, interesting with our output. Uh, if we run that, hopefully you're a step ahead of me and you know what the outputs are gonna be. But we'll compile and run that just to, just to check it. Uh, and notice now we, we're getting uh, 10 decimal uh, is 1, 2, and octal. And remember in hexadecimal, we still represent, uh, we've got 16 digits. So when we get to decimal 10, it's represented with the letter A. And lo and behold, there's uh, the letter A uh, for the hex uh, version of this output. Okay, so we can use these binary literals to, to do some translation there. Okay, um, so we can also, uh, this has been here for a while, but we can also put in the hex uh, version uh, of this stuff. So, um, well, for hex, we're going to start with a 0x, and then we can put in, in this case, I'm going to put in a two-digit uh, hexadecimal number. Uh, but just really it's A, right, uh, in hexadecimal. So we should get essentially the same results. So I'm going to compile and run that just to show you that you can also do uh, hex literals there. So again, same results. Um, so, and we'll do one more example here with uh, F. Um, so we'll compile and run that just to see a little bit different output. Uh, so again, it's going to come out F in the, in the hexadecimal, and that would be what, 15 decimal and, and the 1.7 uh, and, and octal, okay? Um, so if we wanted to create uh, a little bit, uh, you know, more, more dynamic program, uh, we can initialize uh, I, I to 0, and then we can do 
uh, an input statement so we can, you know, uh, enter whatever number we want. And, oh, let's say we want to put in uh, 13 uh, decimal, uh, it'll come out 13 decimal, 1, 5 uh, for octal, and of course D uh, in hexadecimal. With a program like this, we can, you know, put in, well, I don't want to say any number. Uh, we, we haven't done any balance checking here, so that's a little bit dangerous. We don't want to go uh, too high of a number, um, but we can make some modifications to, to make that happen. Um, and if we really wanted to, instead of entering a number, uh, let's go ahead and make a chart. Uh, so we'll do a for loop. And let's indent that and end our loop right there. Uh, so we're, we're essentially going to take i from uh, 0 uh, up to, uh, you know, less than 16, 15. So we're going to go 0 through 15, the, the 16 digits. And now within this loop, uh, this set w becomes a little more important. Um, and we probably also want to... Uh, we need an end line here so it separates each line of our chart okay so we'll compile and run that and we'll get you know in the first column we have the decimal version then the octal number uh, and then hexadecimal so adding a loop we've, we, we've kind of created um, a, a chart there okay so with that done, let me uh, take that off. And one more thing I want to do, it would be nice if we have a uh, binary here, uh, but we don't really have a BIN manipulator. So I'm going to include uh, the bit set library. And then we're going to declare a variable up here, uh, a bit set. And it's going to have four bits in it. Uh, and I'm going to call it, the name of this variable is going to be BIN. Um, just because I like that name and we'll go ahead and initialize it to zero right here okay and then as we go through the loop we're going to need to uh, basically add uh, that in so we want uh, BIN to become uh, I each time through the loop okay so it, it represents but we actually want to store it in the bit set that'll kind of a, a I don't know if it's a cheat, but a way to uh, get it in binary format for us. Uh, and then we'll add another line here, uh, set w to 5, should still be fine for 4 bits. Uh, and then we'll output that bin variable. Uh, and just the quickest way I could think of to get uh, that back out in binary format. So let's execute that, uh, compile and run it, and we'll still get our chart. Uh, but now we've added a fourth column, uh, so if we want to see it in binary. Uh, and so we see the binary representation of, of 0 through 15 there, okay, and the hexadecimal right next to it. So hopefully this is helpful if you're trying to do any kind of binary conversion in C++. At least it gives you a few ideas. Um, obviously, if you want to go any higher than uh, 15, you probably need to change a few things. Uh, if, you, if you go up to 8 bits, you, you need to change the set width uh, to correspond to that um, so it, it's, it's wide enough to be able to fit on the screen. Uh, but yeah, with a little bit of modification, you can, you can print your chart a little bit uh, bigger. So hopefully uh, this is useful to you if you're looking for some kind of uh, number conversion uh, thing and you want an easy way to do it. Um, I think you found it.